Welcome back. We've been on an extended holiday for the last two months, but we're back again, and this week with three episodes. And we're probably going to be doing more episodes per week going forward. In this week's episode, I talked to Tomoko Iwasaka from Indeed in Tokyo, Japan, about how she got into sourcing, sourcing in Asia, and what tools she uses. Welcome to the Sourcing Challenge Show. I'm your host, Mark Lundgren. I started off by asking Tomoko how she got into sourcing. So after graduating from university, I was doing completely different stuff. I was um, in the retail industry doing the mm -hmm. store operations. So basically, I was like a store manager, um, managing the people, managing the budget of the store, or training the people, hire new stuff, those kind of stuff. But after like six, seven years in the retail industry, I decided to move forward with a different career. Mm -hmm. And um, I, when I was doing, I was in the retail industry, what I enjoyed most was um, uh, dealing with people. So like training people or the higher staff. So I decided to step mm -hmm. into the recruiting industry. And mm -hmm. luckily, I found a job at the Facebook as a um, contractor for the mm -hmm. APAC SOSA. That is the beginning of my career in the recruitment. So yeah. I started uh, Facebook and I stayed there for about a year. And I learned the basic of the sourcing. However, um, so there was nobody else in the so <laughs> in the APAC region so it was also a tough time and I was always what should I do as the SOSA what is the target or the what is the yeah. KPI and um, uh, I was lucky enough to work with the very talented people but at uh, same time it wasn't much of the guidance I can get because there's um, no saucer in no. the park. And then after a year, I left the Facebook and I joined the recruitment agency mm -hmm. as the uh, it's saucer. And okay. um, I was involved in the tech industry, um, mainly for startup company, finding the bilingual candidates for the company who or launch in Japan or some like big uh, tech company in Japan, like um, of course Amazon or those mm. kind of companies. And I stayed about two years. Then that time, Martin reached out me for the position at the mm -hmm. Expedia. And I was always wanted to go back to in-house uh, yeah. because Motivation is a totally different with agency. It's more about like um, money <laughs> in simple way, but for the uh, in house, it's more about how to grow the company, how to get more talented people for the company. So I wanted to go back to in house, and I thought the Expedia was the great chance for me to move on. And uh, also I felt Martin is a very knowledge <laughs> person. <laughs> and uh, when I was with Facebook, I couldn't get much um, um, learning from the mm -hmm. organization, but with Expedia working with Martin, I think I thought it's gonna be a great chance. So I joined Expedia. And again, it's um, only Sosa in the APAC region. And uh, again, I struggle with uh, Target or the KPI. And then I experienced um, many organization change and um, uh, focus was to hire the bilingual candidate for the yeah. experience. And as you might already know, Japan is a very unique and a difficult market. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah, especially finding them um, uh, buying our candidates. Um, in Japan, we only have a few percent of the people who actually can speak English at the mm -hmm. business level. So it's, it was very tough. Uh, but after two years, I, I enjoyed at the Expedia and also I get to work with uh, other recruiter and other market like um, mm -hmm. my main focus was um, Japan however uh, there's a Korea position and also sometimes I work, work with the China recruiter as well so in it's more like APAC not only Japan mm -hmm. so I did gain the 
uh, experience. But uh, after about two years, then I got contacted by Indeed, and uh, it was from my director, Ed, and um, he, after hearing about the opportunity, first I was kind of hesitant to move forward because I kind of liked Expedia, but I thought it's going to be, again, a great chance, and now I landed in the Indeed, and uh, there are so many talented sources out there, and also now I'm focusing on engineering more technical mm -hmm. side of the hiring. So not only for the uh, APAC region, or well, the position is in uh, Tokyo. However, we get to um, get in touch with the candidates outside mm. of Japan and yeah. bring into to the Japan. So it's a new challenge for me. And there's a crazy source <laughs> in the Indeed as well. And uh, in first week at the Indeed, we had a one week training. It was so intense, but it's it's so uh, full of information. I finally I get to do the actual sourcing, so <laughs> I really enjoy <laughs> working here at the Indeed. So because you had so few well people to learn from, and being the only mm. sourcer in a lot of where where did you go to learn or? What did you read, or who did who did you learn from that like early in your mm -hmm. career, both at Facebook and and an agency? Yeah, so when I was with the Facebook, I already had the information about there's a you know the uh, Google Chrome extension mm -hmm. that you can get the contact information. Those kind of information from the recruiter in India. Mm -hmm. So. Um, I guess Japan is a little bit uh, behind for those sourcing technology. Mm -hmm. Not much people in here has actually knows about that. Even the, those Blue Line connector operator, they, we, most of the people only knows about end or like a quotation, <laughs> that's it. And um, yeah, so first um, there's a recruiter in India who has a knowledge about it. Mm -hmm. And then when I moved to the Expedia, Martin was the one when I wanted to know about something and mm -hmm. I always ping him to learn about it. And also he shared uh, uh, some Docs to like get the information and some like meaning uh, useful sites to I can learn from and so yeah. I always learn from the sourcer outside of Japan. So <laughs> that is how I got the information and knowledge about the sourcing. Yeah, and tell me about Japan. What what makes it so hard for well, especially for for the people like us from the outside mm. um, to, to source in Japan and to recruit mm. there? So um, first is, um, I guess, how we search the new opportunity is uh, completely different. So if the person think about moving to other company, uh, most of the people, what they will do is going to agency or the mm -hmm. register themselves in a local job board. <laughs> and the local job board is a bit like private. So we cannot hack into those mm -hmm. uh, database. So we cannot find those profile. And I guess the user of the LinkedIn is uh, growing right now in uh, Japan as well. However, it's very few still. So it's hard to get to the people who actually consider moving to mm -hmm. new opportunity. It's the one thing, I guess. Yeah. And um, if it's for Japanese company uh, looking for only Japanese speaking, it's, I guess it's going to be much easier if you can just use a local job. But however, for the bilingual candidates, as I mentioned, only few percent of people can actually speak English. Yeah. So, it's just so hard. <laughs> and uh, even though um, people are good at uh, lighting and the reading, it's not mean they can actually speak with mm. um, English speaker. So again, it's gonna be difficult, uh, yeah, to find enough who can actually use the English in the business situation. Yeah. yeah. So how do you go about it? How do you 
kind of make sure you find that very small percentage of people who, mm. who are good for the bilingual roles? So I guess uh, it's everybody is the same, but uh, don't give up. <laughs> it's just <laughs> keep pushing the people. It's the only way to reach to the person. So when I was with an agency, of course, it's agency. There's not much to I can use. So I only have the LinkedIn and I have my personal Facebook account and I have the, of course, the laptop <laughs> to such <laughs> out there. And so they actually don't read the LinkedIn message. So mm -hmm. that means if I find, find a good candidate, then I have to find the other way to contact them. But there's not much, like, contact information out there in the web yeah. so then i will find a facebook account and um, i will use my private account to contact them mm -hmm. luckily i was in uh stay in the same industry that means my connection in the facebook is also in those uh, digital media mm -hmm. industry so i have the people connection and the people think oh this one person is not like somebody <laughs> crazy so yeah. they will some reply to me so if i keep pushing then i can get the people to reply so it's i only <laughs> advice i can give to the recruiter who does the japan market is uh, don't give up mm. yeah if the timing comes uh people will reply and i guess it's all uh same for the every market Mm. It's just that not much people to approach. That means you have to keep chasing one person. <laughs> yeah. And working with Korea and China, I, I, I can imagine it's a similar kind of market as well in terms of that. Yes. Yeah, so Korea, uh, it's a small market and it's similar to Japan. And um, however, um, they use especially for the bilingual people they use linkedin much, mm. much more than japan and also they will reply to you and japanese they don't reply but korean <laughs> <laughs> they reply to you so it's much easier to get them talk to you in korean market china they will reply easily however candidate management is tough so sometimes candidate will disappear in the day of the first interview and you cannot reach them anymore. <laughs> so it happened and that I, I heard that Chinese are not afraid to changing the jobs. So yeah, so that's why I guess people sometimes disappear and uh, they are just okay with it. <laughs> so candidate management is difficult. But, um, if the opportunity is great, even Chinese candidate, they are very responsible. And right now, I'm reaching to the Chinese candidate at mm -hmm. the Indeed, but they're very responsible for my mm -hmm. message and uh, they will stay in the interview process. <laughs> so it depends on the opportunity. If yeah. they're interested, they will stay. What kind of tools um, like that you've seen in the industry? What what tools does work in, in Japan and, and maybe Korea and, and things like that? Uh, for the bilingual candidate, I guess LinkedIn became um, num for myself, it's not the number one tool. Mm -hmm. And uh, if I, so I always write my message in English. Mm -hmm. And if the candidates reply in English, that means they are not afraid to use the English. So most of the time I will get in, get to the bilingual candidates. And yeah. um, it's the best way to like assess their English skill as well. And so it's the number one tool for me. And uh, there are other local job board I used when I was with Expedia, it's the paid one and it's very expensive. Mm -hmm. However, you can get the candidate. And, but it's the local job board and everybody is looking for a job. That means your position is not the, their priority. So mm. it's hard to um, do the candidate management. Yeah. 
in those ones. So uh, Japan market, I like LinkedIn the best. And uh, for the Korea, um, so bilingual candidates, again, it's there in the LinkedIn. And there's a local job board as well. And uh, however, uh, they are cheap compared to Japan. <laughs> <laughs> However, uh, those people who register in those uh, local job boards, they're usually not good at English. Mm. So, so in Korean market, if the candidates are fighting, the uh, first thing they will do is uh, register in LinkedIn. Mm -hmm. So yeah, so again, the link Korea LinkedIn is the best. China, I'm still figuring out and um, <laughs> yeah. I mean, you, but, and, you and everybody else, it's almost that market type. <laughs> I it's, know there's yes. a way, but we haven't found it yet. <laughs> yeah, so maybe in the future I will find out the China better. But now, only way to contact the Chinese candidate will be um, um, LinkedIn. What does the kind of sourcing market look like in Japan now? Like, obviously, you you like Facebook, you were the only one, and mm. I guess with Expedia, it was a similar thing in in the Japan market. Now you're you're in a company that has more sources, but what is the kind of local, like, is sourcing become a thing in Japan or is it still very much early days? It's still much early days. So now I, we are trying to hire more sourcers in the Japan. And right now, including me, we have uh, four people in Tokyo office. Mm -hmm. And um, I don't think not that many companies has the, the size of the sourcing team in their company and uh, many recruiting people think SOSA is more like um, associate level of the mm. recruiter, but it's not. No. We are the very specialized people. It's a different um, talent we have than like, well, I like recruiters, but it's different. And um, so how they see the SOSA is like um, associate liquid that, that means it's hard to get the good people to onboard as the SOSA. Mm -hmm. Now we are only people who be interested is like an um, associate recruiter who loves to talk with the candidate, not much of the process. Those people will be <laughs> joining the um, indeed, but still it's the early stage. And also I had a chance to get involved in an interview and uh, uh, seeing the people's technique about um, sourcing is very basic. So I, I think I've already mentioned that uh, uh, even the blue and they only know about and or not those like basic one. So yeah, I would love to see that this market in more in mature in near future mm -hmm. and uh, also I want to see many talented sosa in uh, Japan in the future but still it's hard to find uh, those experienced sosa in Japan. I don't yeah. think not that many here. Is it, is it partly also because of the way that the market is with you have to be very patient and keep following up with people to get them to respond? That, mm. that it's more on that kind of research thing and then handing it over? I guess that is the one thing. And also um, still for um, Japan market, you have to rely on agency mm. to get the people. So I guess many for um, American or the European companies think about the recruiting organization, um, I think they will hire the recruiter first and um, dealing with an agency mm. and get the candidates. But I guess I see that many companies changing the structure recently. And um, I think that Amazon changing their um, like um, approach recently and they are trying to hire more sourcing recruiter, mm -hmm. basically they are the sourcer and more going towards the direct recruiting. That is the trend in Japan. So yeah. I guess it will change. If the um, uh, organization wants to do the direct sourcing, the direct recruiting, then they have to hire more sourcer. Yeah. 
in the end. So it will change, but how the market is rely on the agency or the local job board, that is the reason why we don't have much sosa needed here in Japan. Zenmoko, if, uh, if people want to follow you and, and, uh, and see where, like the things that you're writing and what you're doing, how can they, how can they best do that? So I'm not much active on the, uh, posting anything on LinkedIn. And I, I, so when I was with uh, Expedia, more actively sharing the, about the company, I guess now I'm with Indeed for six months and um, I like to do more of those. And uh, um, also, since there's not much Sosa in Japan, my like I would be a uh, like number one Sosa in the Japan market. And um, so in the future, I would like to have more knowledge sharing in the market and get the people interested in the Indeed and want to people to join Indeed as the Sosa, not the recruiter. <laughs> and, <laughs> yeah, so I'm planning to have those challenge in the near future. No, oh, it sounds good. Definitely yeah. looking forward to that. And yeah, as you said, getting, getting more people in the, in the industry to see that it's a career and not just a, a beginning of the career that you know, would yeah. help the whole market. Yeah, and um, when I was with I was working with um, um, Expedia. There's a Sosa in London, and she used to be a technical recruiter, but she loved to do more of those things, so she switched to the Sosa. And also, I see other people here that indeed as well recruited to Sosa, or it happened, and it's not that you, as you mentioned, it's not the beginning of the career. It's no, the exactly. specialized position. So I want to see the market move to that way in the Japan as well. Absolutely. Well, thank you very much for for having time for me. Well, thank you for having me today, and uh, I enjoyed the conversation. Thank you.